um, like a familiar face over there. I call the uh, meeting of uh, July 18, 2006 of the Athens Shade Tree Commission to order. And the first order of business is to review the minutes that Candy Bradley prepared for us. Uh, if people will just look over the minutes that should be sitting before you. Additions, corrections, and then meeting. Would somebody move to accept the move minutes? Move to accept the minutes. Um, motion uh, to accept the minutes. A second, please. Second. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have minutes accepted. Thank you. Thank you, Candy, for that. Those minutes are also available to the public uh, on the government channel. Uh, as a posting, so people may read those. Our first order of business is the uh, a landscape issue, landscape ordinance issue, pardon me, and we have uh, a landscape plan for uh, Bennigan's, uh, which is a restaurant going out on East State Street uh, next to the Elder Beerman Mall and in front of uh, Hampton Inn. Uh, the address there is, uh, hmm, Someplace in the thousand, uh, I would say. <laughs> upper nine hundred. Upper nine hundred. <laughs> very good. That's a good address. The upper nine hundred, uh, and this is on the north side of the street. Um, for uh, people um, wondering about the site, it has uh, some challenges in that uh, there is a great slope at the uh, the back of the lot, which would be the northern end of the lot, and then uh, it gradually slopes toward East State Street, and then there's another slope right down to East State Street uh, frontage. There's a ramp driveway going up to Hampton Inn on uh, the western edge and the Elder Beerman parking lot on the eastern edge. So uh, the Bennigan's restaurant has uh, need of uh, some trees in the parking lot and along the edge. Um, let's see, we've reviewed this some. Before, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have a question to you, Steve. Um, the the driveway that goes up the Hampton Inn has got trees planted along the side of it by the Hampton Inn mm -hmm. owners. There doesn't appear to be an additional eight-foot border between Bennigan's and the Hampton Inn driveway. Now, clearly they're sharing this driveway and you know, I'm not sure what how we should interpret the landscape ordinance that says there should be an eight-foot uh, or four foot, depending on the size of the property border, on each side of the boundary between the borders. Yeah. A literal reading of the ordinance would have a 16 foot grass buffer because the drive area up to the Hampton is greater than 7,000 square feet or 25 cars, and also the Bennigan's lot is too. So there should be an eight foot reserve on the Bennigan's property and an eight foot reserve. Um, on the 50 foot wide section of the hotel lot that comes down to State Street. The original plan that you'd looked at several months ago, um, the owner, Rick Rose, owner of Bennigan's, had asked for a consolidation approval where he didn't want to have interior landscaping, didn't want to have anything over by the mall, wanted to actually use part of that 50 feet where he has uh, an easement. Um, working in relationship with Mr. Bortle, who came in with a plan not too long ago for the uh, Hampton Inn. So he was asking for consolidation, essentially. Now, the reason this has come back is because I believe after you reviewed the original plan, you drafted a letter and sent it to Mr. Rose and said, you need to work on this a little, a little more. We're not going to grant this consolidation. The drawing that you have is the big sheet that we looked at originally and just reduced in size and those are all my notes where the trees where things were missing um, mr. Rose has essentially been out of contact with the city for quite a while and did come to town last week with his contractor and uh, was trying to get you know, some things squared away on water sewer taps that kind of thing and 
when he was in my office, I told him, you need to react to the tree commission's letter and submit a new plan. And he just told me then that whatever the tree commission wants, that's what I'll do. Um, so I kind of look at it as a great opportunity. He essentially admitted, or not admitted, but realized that his his plan as presented was not going to fly. He weren't going to buy it. There was something else that had to be done. And he was evidently preoccupied with other issues and told me simply to present it again to the tree commission and you can, you essentially have got a, a blank slate to do whatever it is you need to do. What I had marked on the plan and what I told him was you need to over by the uh, university mall, take your driveway and move it over, um, lose a row of parking on the eastern side in order to get that landscape buffer. You need to remove four parking spots on the interior part of the parking lot. And I'd indicated those two to meet the 5% interior requirement. You need some more trees along the back where you don't have any indicated along the driveway on the northern side, which is on that slope. Um, and I believe the tree commission made comment about the ground cover out on the front too, where it may be, um, maybe too steep to, uh, to hold grass. Um, that material is just all fill. It's things that have been moved around, so the quality of the, of the soil may be a little suspect too, but uh, you were concerned about that slope in the front and what would be planted there. There's a lot of right-of-way. They have more than 100 feet of right-of-way, so they could, they could use the right-of-way for their front plantings. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what was indicated on the plan. Yes, they were showing it out in the right-of-way. showing the um, uh, trees in the right -of -way. So that's why I brought it back because you know Bennigan's has been uh, languishing. It's not the, the construction work has not proceeded at a great pace, but they want to finish up before the end of the summer now. And so they're back in town and want to tie up all their loose ends. On this drawing, there doesn't seem to be a dumpster site indicated. Is there? Do you know of one there? Because the dumpster site, but it's right, it has to have a fence around it, and it has to have uh, plantings. Uh, at least a six foot high fence and plantings that will reach one foot above the fence at maturity mm -hmm. is what the ordinance says. Yeah. Um, that's something that can just be noted. On those plans, they pro well, see, they're going to have to rework the parking lot now anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, How many parking spaces does the city require of them for this site? Well, I can't remember, but it was much fewer than what they had indicated. And they had shown, I think they said that it was in the 90s range. Yeah, they they said the franchise required them to have over 100. Thing is, they have a they have a parking easement, a parking agreement to park on the side of University Mall if they have excessive parking. Um, the city requirement was only for something in the 60s. So this, by taking that drive aisle off, reducing some parking on that side, and losing four spaces to tree islands is not going to put it below. Right, on um, the parking requirement of the city. Now that might be a lot lower than what he wants, um, but then he did acknowledge that, you know, if there is more parking needed, they have an agreement with uh, Southeast Ohio Management at University Mall to just park on that existing parking area right there. Um, I thought I had heard that there was going to be a driveway into the University Mall parking lot, but I don't see that on here. There is an easement that goes from that 50 foot part of the Hampton Inn lot, goes from there across the back of the parking lot and will, of Bennigan's, and will connect over to University Mall. So there's a cross easement. It's not indicated on those drawings. Okay. So, so it, it will be kind of. That would give um, access for people parking in the University Mall lot to get over to right. Bennigan's. It won't be as clearly defined as some might hope, where you can you could see exactly you could cut across the back of Bennigan's without really going through the parking lot. But it's going to be a little bit of a maze going through the lot. You will be able, you will be able to make it from University Mall to the drive up to the hotel through the back of Bennigan's, and there is a recorded easement across the back. So that's going to be behind the Bennigan's building. Is that mm -hmm. what you're telling me? Oh, isn't that okay? I see on your map it says E. Isn't that where you're supposed to have some kind of? Is that where the easement is supposed to be? I wrote the E there too. Oh, 
the parking areas. Right. Mm -hmm. The driveway would be directly behind Bennigan's then, right. the building. It's the employee parking lot area, basically. Some of this is going to have to be reworked. What I did was I went, there was one of the things that the administration wanted was this cross access because we didn't want people coming down out of Hampton. We're very close to a signalized intersection and then have trouble getting out onto State Street. So at, at the city's request, there was an agreement between Bennigan's, the Hampton, and the University Mall for this easement. Now, it's not, let me say, it's not the perfect ideal route across there, but there is the ability to get across. The easement, as a matter of fact, the way that I verified that it even, that it did exist was I went to the uh, county recorder's website and uh, typed in some keywords and I finally found uh, the recorded easement. So I can get a copy of that for you and put it put it in the file. Um, but it, it is there. Okay. It's just not exactly the way. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to kind of. There's no direct route across there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the landscape ordinance has as um, a use of trees is to define um, edges and entries, and, mm -hmm. um, and it is helpful uh, so that you don't have some amorphous uh, asphalt sea that you're na uh, navigating and wondering you know, where an edge is. And we have a couple of parking lots like that in town that um, are hard to figure out where you're going. <laughs> so uh, that might call for some. Um, more plantings back here. This is nice, the addition of the trees that you indicated at the back of the employee's parking lot to help up perhaps uh, the shrub area over here uh, might also be a candidate for. You know, it looks like this is the area where they would have to have a dumpster. This area where there are deliveries, it's in the back. Yeah. So if this is going to be a driveway, we don't have to worry about it. Right. Yeah. With, okay. with so we can just right, right, right. <laughs> can figure out where they're going to put it. Okay. Um, Steve, so what about the um, the trees that you indicated uh, a little bit further um, toward East State Street? A line of five trees that were uh, that are on the eastern edge. They appear to be out in the Elder Beerman parking lot. That's the only place. I either had to draw them in the parking lot or draw them in their drive okay. lane. Uh, uh, so it's just I just wanted to indicate that they effect. should be there, yeah, but yeah. it should be over on their property. In fact, we're, we're going to recommend that they plant small trees there because of the, of the vicinity of the power lines. That are yeah, they run right over here. Approximately the power lines. Mm -hmm. And that length of side there, which I think is 300, looks like 330 uh, feet, uh, means that they could put 16 small trees along that entire edge. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. they won't be able to put them in every We'll put everyone would have been there, but, uh, but that's the sort of number that uh, we might expect all the way along there, from one end to the other, taking out spaces for entries and so on. Um, one of the things that I think we're going to have to do is establish who is responsible for which trees between the Hampton Inn and this site. Um, I think what we, what we should do is allow Bennigan's to uh, consolidate what they should plant along there, along East State Street, as we've shown here. Yeah, that would um, spare them parking that, spaces. That way we, we're not going to impinge on parking spaces on the west side. I like Steve's idea of putting the trees along this side, taking out the uh, one space on here, and then putting these interior lots in with four trees, um, a, a total of four trees. That's a little bit under what we might expect for this number. But, uh, yeah. But that way they wouldn't have anything happening on that western edge. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that way they would have all the space that they've currently got shown there. Um, we, I think, are going to recommend they put um, maples along the East State Street side so that we can get to them to grow quickly, and then probably put oaks in the uh, uh, the Press edge. In, uh, no, the here. In the, uh, yeah, they, yeah. And recommend that they put ground cover, not grass. And we'll look at your list of possibilities. I still like clover. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the, the, the list that I had here uh, actually were shrubs, and some okay. of them are rather low growing. Well, well the, the, what, we, what we might want to do is recommend putting something like clover as a complete ground cover and then planting shrubs that are going to spread in amongst them so that over time they, they build up a landscape that is very easy to maintain. <clears throat> yeah, and the clover would improve the soil for yeah. the uh, shrubs to eventually. 
but you know, he, he looks like a grass. You yes, don't have to mow it. I mean, that's the, or that's maybe the just want to go with the, uh, the little shrubs. Yeah. Um, and obviously we need to observe about the trash collection area, wherever it is, that it has to be screened. Um, so that's what I think we should do. Do you think you could write a letter based on that to, yes, to them? Yes. Telling uh, them that that's what they have to do. Yeah, I've got, um, we'll use uh, your outline of, of things on the uh, mm -hmm. on the map. Um, we have some uh, you know, general categories of oaks in some places and maples and uh, other places so that they don't have all one kind of tree uh, in case something goes wrong. Um, they're, uh, hmm, I think that's it. Um, so are we recommending that they, if they put all these maples in, that they don't choose just one variety, that they have I, I, variety I think, varieties? I think adding six maples along there isn't uh, the same variety isn't going to worry things too, too much. Um, the the Ace of Free, free Money Eyes. If what? Ace of Free Money Eyes, the one I would choose to get <laughs> But I, you know, I, I recognize it's a, it can be a potential problem, but I think it's, uh, yeah. well, it isn't too many that. Yes, and we'll put uh, some other kind of uh, maples in other spots. Uh, this should be. And we were talking about oaks. Yes. Yeah, along here. All of it readily, uh, easily available from nurseries. Nothing exotic. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of. Uh, yeah. And the other thing is, we'll have to have a clear. Some somewhere, some. I think we need to record who is responsible for which forest trees. Yeah. Uh, along that roadway. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, Bennigan's are responsible for all of this lot, but you can see on the eastern edge in their parking lot that there are two trees in what you've got as area D, but Bennigan's are going to be responsible for those two, whereas the ones above them, uh, uh, the Hampton Inn people are responsible for those. Statement of areas of yeah. maintenance yeah. responsibility. One thing you might want to keep in mind too is I suspect I'll have a proposal for development of the front lot just to the west very soon and so you'll have the opportunity if you'd like to mirror the trees going up the, the driveway entrance to the Hampton and another thing too just for people who might be listening the comment Mr. Ingram made about quite a few trees on the um, eastern side the ordinance says that you have to have one large tree or two small trees for every 30 lineal feet and since there's a utility there that could be compromised by a larger tree. That's why there's twice as many trees required. Yeah. Smaller species, twice as many required. That's, uh, they're planting centers. Uh, big trees go on 30-foot centers. Small trees go on 20-foot centers. So it's not quite twice, but um, yeah, there's more, quite definitely. Right. Uh, the size. Yes. Yeah. Depending on the size. <laughs> we we can drop to 15. <laughs> Do we have recommendations for the small trees? Um, on F, we... Uh, that it is not. no, but one thought was hawthorns, perhaps, given the fact that this is a really tough site uh, and there's going to be salt probably, and uh, uh, probably people won't be walking near them either. They're not going to uh, cause yeah, there is a problem. Service, could be a service barrier. Service barrier, right. Or uh, a mixture. Or a mixture, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, <coughs> are you sure the service barrier would take this site? I was thinking uh, golden rain tree. Yeah. That is there a possibility? Yeah. Yeah. It's tougher yeah. than the service pair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we recommend a mixture? Yeah. yeah. Well, because be. then yeah. I think then we've okay. got... Yeah, there's, not, there's no reason not to. Yeah. I will email uh, this around to members of the Tree Commission before I send it mm -hmm. uh, out uh, to Candy, uh, to uh, Steve, uh, so that people can make corrections and suggestions about that. Um, make sure I've got things done. Yeah. Correct, but yeah, Golden Rain Tree and Hawthorne would be tough, uh, and that's a really tough site. Mm -hmm. so, and then will we see a final plan to give our final approval then? Mm -hmm. I think a final plan is necessary, yes. Yeah. 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 Seeing as, as, as yeah, the drawing we're working from is not really a, a Bennigan's drawing. I mean, I think right. I think it's reasonable to expect a final plan for this. The, one of the contacts I had with the uh, site contractor out there was that a company, I think it's indicated on a drawing, the, the architect's name is uh, Breach, B-R-E-E-C-H, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and at that time, this was probably a couple months ago, he said he was sure the architect was going to do whatever was necessary, whatever that meant, 
So what we can say is necessary is you take this letter with these recommendations, create a, a site drawing for us for landscaping, and resubmit that. Yeah. So, and the architect's got the ability to, to, to do that fairly easily. Um, huh? If you get a chance, could you put, um, you know, download that GIS uh, map with the right of way just for context? Because, uh, again, I'm trying to visualize where it's going to end up in terms of dumpsters in the back of the building. That's okay. I mean, you know, just put it in the file. Okay. Yeah, I might have another sheet that shows that okay. in the drawings. It just wasn't indicated on that on that sheet. And it may have been something that they hadn't even, wasn't even drawn out yet, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But it, yeah, I'm sure they'll have to have, to have a dumpster. Mm -hmm. yeah, we really yeah, I will put that in the file too. Yeah, it looks, yeah. it looks like a close fit between dumpsters, loading, the back of the building, and the right of way. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. trying to visualize it. And, and David says there's a drop off real quick as soon as you get to the back of the, the lot. So it's, it's got to be close between the lot and the front. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the dumpsters are adjacent to buildings too, or parking areas. So, you know, it's not always that that screening ends up on all three sides because of the, the yeah. placement. Yeah. But it will at least have to have the fence all the way around, you know, in case it's right up against a building or a sidewalk or a paved area. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Folks at the Hampton Inn are going to have a view directly down on us. <laughs> so it would be nice to have that screen. <laughs> Some of these, I mean, they're, they're, these are all, there's a lot of limitations on each of these sites and there's a lot going on. The, the owner wants to maximize the area for customers and conducting business. The city has an interest in um, having the city um, look a certain way. Landscape ordinance is part of that to help you know, beautify the city, to actually to raise property values is a, you know, kind of an outcome of this. The property will be worth a lot more. Um, than it would have been with just pavement all the way around it. So there's a lot of conflicting, competing interests going on here, and we're just trying to compromise um, and, and do the best we can for all, all the people concerned. Very good. Thank also, you. to increase the comfort of their customers, you know, I'm, I'm looking for all my shaded spots possible these days, and it really brings to mind how important it is to have good shade trees mm -hmm. and parking lots. Yeah. Yes, it's true. <clears throat> and when we have to trade off, that means we end up having hotter pavement. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but we end up having hotter pavements, generating more heat, and um, you know, it's not you know, it's not as nice for the patrons either. So. I think, I think one of the nice things out of the compromise here is getting the trees along the uh, north side of East End Street yeah, yeah. because that's, that's really so bare nice. along that side. Right. Mm -hmm. There's so few places in right. uh, commercial uh, areas that don't have power lines overhead. Yeah. Uh, limitation is really, uh, you know, that's a hard site to find. So this is a valuable right. thing. Now, were they concerned at all about the trees and visually seeing the restaurant and things like that? Do they still have concerns about that? It sets up somewhat from yeah, um, the grade, I think, helps them. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, uh, and then the trees. There's a big entrance, obviously, from the University Mall that's going to be clear of trees, uh -huh. so they're right. going to be able to see from that right. side. And, mm -hmm. and all these trees are going to be short. Yes. Yeah, so. that, uh, that incoming, right. uh, people coming into town from that side will have just decorative trees below the Vinegans. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you go out there and look at it. Now, the building's significantly off East State Street and back up. Probably there's a six to eight foot um, elevation change from street level to the pad that that the building's on, so it's sitting up. As you're driving down the street, it's above your eye level. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. right. So it's you, the building's going to be easily seen, no matter how many how right. many trees mm -hmm. are there, because it is over an acre in area. I mean, it's mm -hmm. spread out pretty good. Uh, this should be very handsome when it's done. Well, thank Mr. Rose, and we will uh, get this uh, together um, very quickly and move it around amongst us, so we have something for him to get going on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on nope. that? Okay, our next order of business just, there is the uh, oh, a question to Candy. The Kroger's, uh, the letter on the Kroger's expansion went out uh, last week, right? So we've not heard anything yet. And Steve, if uh, you want. Um, a representative of Kroger's and um, First time, Mr. Bowl. Turner from Burden Bowl came to the Board of Zoning Appeals because Kroger's needed a uh, um, 
the flood variance, elevation variance. Uh, the building was constructed about eight inches lower than what the city requires. It was an error found during a review of their recent remodeling several years ago. Uh, the cost of improvement dictated flood proofing. Um, however, they were granted a variance at that time, but the variance doesn't extend to additions. So they had to come back to Board of Zoning Appeals and a, another variance was granted. Um, so they didn't have to have an eight inch step in the middle of the grocery store. Um, there was discussion at that meeting too about, um, I'm not sure how it came up, we started talking about the, <clears throat> excuse me, the landscaping. Um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, Board of Zoning Appeals wanted to know how many parking spots were required. So I informed them then that there were areas that the Tree Commission had recommended retrofitting, um, cleaning up some additional trees um, out on State Street, some on OU's property behind the building. And the representative Kroger's and the representative of the engineering firm acknowledged receiving that letter and that they would do all they could to work with the Tree Commission um, and the university to plant as many trees as possible. They wanted to be a good neighbor. They're, they knew that you know, they were just meeting the parking requirement, but they didn't want that to be left right there. So they're agreeable mm -hmm. really to That's just good. about anything you want to do, to be honest with you. Well, we'll um, we have uh, some specifics that we can put together for them on sites and uh, types of trees, and maybe we could even block out the awful store to the east of them that they'd like to hide, <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> but we have some uh, good suggestions for use of those spaces so that they would have an attractive entry, and uh, they've got a wonderful opportunity on the western side of their parking lot to create serious shade uh, for parking and uh, patrons. So yeah, that's so, very good news. Yeah, just to give you an update on that, they are they received the letter and um, are agreeable to just about anything that you recommend. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, we will, uh, did, uh, let's see, might we have the names of those individuals for purposes of contact or? Jerry Turner. Yeah, I think Candy, you, we were looking up, it's East Dublin Granville Road. I think, yeah, yeah we've, got the, we've got the engineer's address. Okay, thank you. That's very good news. Um, we might want to have a meeting uh, about the uh, just looking in, at the preliminaries of that Kroger site uh, to put together some um, specific suggestions so that we'll have something for them. Okay. We'll do that maybe with our uh, educational thing that Emily is going to do for us. Uh, the next item is um, the uh, AEP pruning language which um, came up in Paul's um, tree committee uh, environment. environment and yeah, well, this is dovetailing with the AP showing up about the power outages on mm -hmm. uptown area. And um, I think you probably got the last email. We've been going back and forth with uh, John Buck about this type mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, essentially, we gave him some, um, we gave him the language from the 86 ordinance saying, can you change that? They came back to us, uh, me, Byron, uh, Answering machine message saying no, we don't. We're not interchanging anything to add the pruning. Um, in other words, changing the language as they like to prune in, a, in the right way, utilities in the right way. Um, I got back to him again saying, okay, uh, can we work with procedure, better procedure? And I've yet to get any response of anything of any significance. They said yes. I passed it on to somebody else, and we'll go from there. Um, one thing I would like to do is um, I'd like to get more feedback on, they, at the meeting they brought up the idea that when you do prune trees, when they mark trees, they actually put out yellow tags. I get to meet somebody who's had one of these yellow tags on their door. Um, if possible, I'd like to see how, what percentage of people are getting yellow tags to saying your tree is about to be pruned and what kind of procedures are actually happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know you probably talk to more people who complain about this than I do in that sense or let you know what's going on. Uh, mostly because I really want to try seeing if we can pin them down on some written procedure, and mm -hmm. I'd be able to see. I'd like to see a written procedure that we can be in agreement with, yeah. that their contractors are aware of as well. But right now, there's no real satisfaction going on. Right, they, because they, if it's one thing for them to have a procedure, but if their contractors are not implementing it, so you know, 
it's, isn't it their responsibility to make sure their contractors are? I would think so. Yes. Are um, following the contract. Well, <laughs> again, the the uh, eighty six ordinance uh, essentially just says you know you're allowed to do whatever it takes to, to, to cut the trees up or rather keep the lines electric lines going. What we were trying to do is say that they would follow some kind of uh, arbor standards, tree cutting standards. Um, Again, they said, well, we don't have to amend this, we probably won't. Uh, but at the same time, they were still willing to talk to us about things uh, in terms of that. I know we sent a meeting schedule to them. I, I'm pretty sure they were, They said they wouldn't be able to make it here yeah. uh, this time. But the idea really is to is is to get what they have in terms of in writing and then saying, okay, are you people following it? <clears throat> uh, so uh, anyone who's out there who's had a blue dot put on their tree or a red dot put on their tree but didn't get a yellow hang tag, let Paul will know. Yeah, uh, you can find my email address from through the city website, city council. And part of it is just so I, I can find out. I've been doing polling in my neighborhood area, and most there's a good percent of people don't even know what blue dot means. So yeah. the message is not getting there somehow. So blue dot means it's going to be pruned, and red dot means it's going to be removed. Yeah. And, and again, really, the, the conversation we had at the, um, at the committee meetings, environment committee meetings, with uh, Steve Stanley there. Um, one of the things I wanted to emphasize to him is that, you know, this is like, you know, somebody, you know, you were saying about removing trees rather than butchering them in terms of yeah, putting a better tree in. Ones, yes. um, you know, part of the conversation I had with him is that really he should be talking to the people before they cut them and say, okay, you, this tree is going to be really lopsided. You have it twice, you know, and, uh, you know, do you want a, a bad looking tree that's going to fall on your house or something in terms of lopsidedness? Or, or you know, I was, I was saying, really, you have to look at it like it's a pet. Okay, you have to talk to him like you're about to put down somebody's pet. You know? <laughs> um, I don't think he really, you know, I, I probably didn't think he needed to do counseling on that for a tree. But just, I don't know. Well, he's with his uh, children and their 4-H showing of uh, animals at the fair, so that was a good uh, approach, I'd say. <laughs> but, you know, again, we, it needs to translate eventually to some kind of process that's written down and that, that everybody knows about and at least, you know, that everybody knows that should be followed. And that's what I'd like to see, but uh, again, the the emails back and forth, the conversations back and forth have been, you know, with weeks in between and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. So. Yeah. And it seems to me I've heard that there are uh, other places where electric companies do a much better job than is being done around here. Are they being presented with some evidence of that? Um, they they won prizes. I mean, they have the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> AEP elsewhere in the country does win prizes yeah. for what they yeah. do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it's translating where we are. Yeah. In fact, it's the same contracting company, Asplund, that's doing the pruning really? in those areas, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So they're capable. So it's yes. capable. I think it's a matter of the community getting the right language into the contract. Yes. Which we'll have to do yeah. when the contract is renewed. But that's a long way away. Yeah, yes. unfortunately. Yeah. When is that? 2011. <laughs> we, get a, we, we do get a chance, though, next year, because I think one of the other utility um, ordinances is up for renewal uh, next year. So we'll be able to look at the possibility of putting the ANSI A300 into the, into the language for them and then procedures like Paul just outlined of forming property owners and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Going on. yeah, the, the thing to do is maybe find out exactly, first I want to know really exactly what they're doing. I mean, we heard what they said they were doing. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I, I've been trying to find, you know, the first time I saw one of these yellow tags is when he waved in front of us that evening. So uh, I'm trying to see where I've seen it, you know, if anybody else has seen it. Maybe an endangered species. Uh, yeah, so uh, fellow commissioners might also inquire of people from whom you've probably heard complaints. Did you see a yellow, did those folks get a yellow tag on their door in advance of uh, pruning? Um, we have, uh, I've included in your uh, packet of things today one page. Let me hold yours up, Emily. Uh, this is from, um, I don't know if that can be seen the um, standard practices for trees, shrubs, and other woody plants from the American National Standards Institute. This is called the A300. It's about pruning. And uh, this one page, uh, which is page four in that manual, uh, has about six or seven sentences that describe what pruning practices ought to be. Uh, this is something that, at our last meeting, uh, Mark Whitney suggested the OU liaison to the Tree Commission said that simply following ANSI standards, the A300 standards, would solve the problem, probably. And uh, the, uh, the description is aimed specifically at uh, utility pruning operations. Um, 
it calls for a fairly simple approach of see cuts should be made uh, a minimum number of cuts should be made to accomplish uh, the pruning uh, the natural shape of the tree should be considered trees directly under and growing into the facility or utility should be removed or pruned uh, pruning should be done by removing entire branches or by removing branches that have laterals growing into or once pruned will grow into the facility or utility space trees growing along the side or growing toward the facility utility should be pruned by removing entire branches. Branches that when cut would produce sprouts uh, that would grow into the facilities should be removed. Branches should be cut to laterals or parent branch and not at a pre-established clearing limit, uh, which is an interesting uh, end of sentence and end of point because uh, in many cases what we're getting is a corridor of a defined uh, limit. And uh, what would be a better arrangement would be to avoid uh, stub cuts, which means that a tree has a branch that's just whacked mm -hmm. off here, and you could perhaps be better advised to take it all the way back to the uh, toward the trunk or to some point where another branch comes and you cut at that point. Uh, so you wouldn't have that tunnel effect. Um, and the tree would be healthier. And in the case of trees that have been repeatedly topped, um, those trees are ultimately a potential hazard for um, for citizens. Uh, as a, you know, they, uh, a silver maple that wanted to be to 100 feet high and that has been cut to be under a power line um, can develop um, a terrible rotting situation. Apparently, it's possible that some of these crews from Asplund have indeed uh, uh, found trees that have. Uh, standing water, perhaps in the um, the, the dead, the crown trunk uh, that's been cut off. So those are trees that probably are uh, trees that uh, need to come down and something smaller put in their place, and we need to work in cooperation with uh, AEP to get replacement trees in those situations. But there's a lot of reasons to uh, to do the right thing um, about pruning uh, and removals. Uh, it's not to want everybody to be safe. Uh, the uh, power company people and uh, people who live and walk uh, near trees okay. and, and drive, and drive <laughs> yes, <laughs> and park, and many of them. And I think you, I see you put pruning cycle in here. You told me something about Yes, the, uh, the pruning cycle. I think um, AEP has been coming on about a, a five-year cycle to uh, the various zones uh, that uh, the AEP folks described the other day. Mm -hmm. And I, it seems to me that on the Near East side, they may have increased the cycle somewhat, that okay. they came at a two and a half year cycle. That they, would improve things too, if they made all the residential areas a uh, more frequent cycle for pruning so that they wouldn't have to take these enormous cuts when they come back after five years. Uh, and in some cases, there are, I think, neighborhoods that haven't. Um, Forest Street has a, a lot of pruning dots right now indicated, about uh, 20 or so. And I don't think that street has received pruning in um, maybe more than five years. And so uh, the pruning there is going to make them feel deforested. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe they'll uh, be more careful um, because there's been such. You know, uh, uh, again, I don't know what it works down to the actual contractor who's got the chain. So that's yeah. what worries me a little bit. We can talk a lot to AP, but mm -hmm. whether it works down to those guys, I don't know. Yeah. And that's why I need to find out. That's what we'd like to get set up. So, so, and you'll have that on the agenda this coming. Uh, oh, we're not going to meet until September this week. Okay. okay. August is, is August. August is August, yeah. <laughs> and we decide not to have any more committee meetings. One, one thing that might help us would be uh, if we could get from AEP what their plans are. The cycles in terms, terms, terms of streets, yeah. because yeah. then we could have a look at this issue that Paul's mentioning of yeah. our people being contacted. We may be able to preempt some of the problems. I know we did that with, with the Near East side because the, uh, they they did tell us when they were planning to come through. Okay. So it might help if we, if we were the point of contact and provide that information to. Okay. But okay. whether people know in advance or not, unless they're going to stand there and say, "Wait, wait, don't cut it yeah. that way," you know, uh, it's nice. Well, that's for what the hang tags were supposed to. Was supposed to do uh, the hang tag was supposed to give people the opportunity to contact AEP and tell them what they wanted them to do. Uh, okay. Hmm. And that's why Paul's so concerned about this. That, uh, yeah. So far, nobody's. The procedure may not be being followed. 
Right. Okay. Are there any other comments or questions at this point? On this? Well, the um, third item on the agenda is uh, the ash, uh, emerald ash borer threat, and uh, the mayor has come and I think has uh, some concerns about this uh, <coughs> from a planning point of view. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I was. I keep reading things in the paper about the sash board, mm -hmm. and then I see it in Columbus again after they thought they'd eradicated it last year. And so Candy and I pulled out the old street tree inventory of 1991, and she went through and just looked for any size ash that's in there, and there's 170 some of them. And I haven't got any number for the East State Street Park, West State Street, or the other parks that we have, but I imagine there might be some there. And I was just trying to do some rough calculation if the, because I'm seeing Upper Arlington and other places getting on a program to remove ash trees in total, at least from their, their right of way. Um, even if I used a conservative figure of, say, $300 per tree to take out, because, you know, we all know it can take seven dollars $800 on some, and some are, are relatively cheap, but maybe if we can get a mass contract. And then you got to think, well, we should replace those trees. And you got to figure another $300 there. And if you just take 600 times 200, and you quickly come up with $120,000. And that's that blows the tree commission budget for a lot of years. <laughs> um, or any other budget that we might have. So, you know, and part of the, you know, it's going through my mind is that that inventory is 15 years old. It was 1991 done by Kent State people. Uh, and maybe one of the things that we, we need to start with is just, because I know in the copy that Alvi showed me, there was a lot of description of how they rated trees and, and if it was in good shape, bad shape, and size of them, and a whole lot of other things. Uh, but with GIS and other, other methods that we have today, uh, and a whole lot of students here that would be love, would love to get a part-time job uh, doing some work as long as they were, we had a good plan in place to say, how do you do it? Uh, and what are you looking for? Because we've never really even assessed, as far as I know, unless one of the tree companies comes to us and says, oh, you've got this. Um, we don't really have a methodology of inspecting our trees other than to get phone calls. It's sort of a hit and miss proposition. So it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to upgrade our, our, our inventory you know, as a first step to this, but I think there's also an alert just to the public or council that this is just, we're just talking city right away here on streets and we probably, I think I'm conservative with a $120,000 problem. Uh, but I didn't know before I started looking down through the tree inventory that we only had 170. I was worried we might have 300 or 400 tree of them. I, there was only one in my yard and I knew that's my, my problem because it's on private property, but uh, how many uh, are out there? And so that's what I wanted to do was come to the Tree Commission and just say, this is where my concern is because as a, an administrator and look, looking after the city funds and to advise council on things, $120,000 for, for any problem is just not one that we have lying around anywhere. But if we got on a six-year program, at 20, 25,000 a year, it may be doable. Uh, but there's also, I think, an expense just in getting our inventory. And at the same time, we know, and we've all talked about trying to have a layer of GIS for our tree inventory. And that'd be a good idea. Well, we could try to accomplish the same, both of those at the same time, because we could be able to, I think, through really contracting or hiring students, but have somebody oversee it so that we would be able to uh, really know what we've got and then you know, with the help of the tree commission put a plan together because like one of the things Alvin and I talked about later that night late last week was the, I guess recommended it's not right now state law or anybody else's law like if you discover a rural ash bore you're supposed to eradicate that and then a quarter of a mile in every direction my understanding is that it should be reported to the Department of Agriculture and they will eradicate all ice trees within a half mile. But they've also said they don't have any money to do that and it's up to the local government to do it. 
Oh, okay. Well, they lost. That's why Bowling Green, Upper Arlington, a bunch of other places, because I remember Taft, remember Taft requested X million dollars of the federal government, and he didn't get it. Yeah, you got four. You got four million instead of the 50 he asked okay. for. So uh, the state doesn't have a whole lot of money. Yes, but my, my understanding was that rather than massive plans for eradicating um, the problem in the area where it's spreading, mm -hmm. was to use that money for hot spots mm -hmm. that appear here and there. Now that was as of last February. Has there been a change since then? That was after the, the governor was turned down for his mm -hmm. uh, large amount that he wanted. I think a lot of it is, I mean, four million is statewide is not going to go very far. Um, and the governor has said that local government should try to solve this as, as best they can. I mean, yeah. and, and that's the other potential strategy you might recommend is that do we wait? Well, that's uh, Emily's going to yeah. organise a session for all of the three commissioners to right. get get better educated on the issue. So, but certainly, the thing you just alluded to is what I would hope we can do, and that is that we can wait as long as possible before we do have to take any action. And it's only if we did did develop a hotspot here that right. we would have to take an immediate action. I think. But a tree, a census is really a a census is, yes. Is information. Yes. We need yeah. we need the information. Right well, there. I think that's the first step. I'm just seeing it as a potential problem to the city that is marching across the state. I mean, in the recent news reports, Chicago didn't think they had any problem, and then they went out and started looking and found out they had a massive problem. To do the census, we'd probably need a professional within the, the city organization to coordinate that. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about who might be available to do that? Well, I'm looking at primarily toward Ron Lucas just from the standpoint he's in training as an arborist. Okay. He has an interest in it, he has the GIS background, but he isn't he isn't going to spend hours every day on day day to day supervision. No, but no, no. The, the overall direction yeah. and the focal yeah. funnel point, yes, that's what I okay. would do. So Ron, Ron Lucas would be our contact right for this season. So um, and Andy is he's supposed to is he due back in December? Yes. Okay, so Ron and David would be more please uh, start to think of this type of stuff. That's so when you, say, of us, yeah. when you say yeah. census, are you meaning the inventory and in the inventory checking out all of the um, the um, ash trees for potential problems? Is that? Um, I, I think so, because I think that uh, it, ha it can't be just limited to, to that tree, because I've noticed in, in my neighborhood I've got, we probably have a dozen or more pine trees that have died in the last year. Our total tree care is there taking one out on the neighbor's property today. And, and I know my next door neighbor had like seven trees they had to have taken out this year. Uh, so something, there's other things that go well, on. The, the weather cycle hasn't been helping the trees. No, it hasn't been at all. last two to three years. It hasn't been at all. So I've, to a certain degree, we do need to assess just overall tree condition yeah. and health. Yeah. And that's going to take somebody a little more specialized, but I think that, you know, we can find that either at the graduate student level or other at the university um, under the direction of someone here. But the knowledge that's sitting around here with the Tree Commission is not, not insubstantial either. I mean, but somehow we have to put together a plan and a yeah. recommendation to it, and you can. I, I see it really as you know three ways. I mean, one is you uh, wait to see if it happens, and then if it does, have the money available to be able to have to spend fifty to hundred or hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars in a year. Uh, but then one of the disadvantages to that, if people really believe it's going to hit us at some point is you're going to have over what period of time the replantings of trees and what kind of trees should we be replanting yeah. and you know again that's part of the thing like even if we do the removal should we do it spotty a, yeah. a little bit everywhere so that the new tree growth is going to be equally dispersed too so that if we get the drought type conditions that david has alluded to i mean we have a little better chance 
So you're basically ask, asking for two plans then. One, one is a plan for, for doing a census, mm -hmm. um, and then the other plan will be coping with the, the animal ash water. Right, because it's okay. Yeah. Or any particular disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that one is the current one. That we know is coming. Now, yeah. and this back is, to when, uh, there are supposed to be at least one tree in every township in many cases, two trees in every township across the state that are trap trees that will be cut down at the end of this season and checked for emerald ash borers. Now, if that shows up ash borers closer to Athens, that would, I think, change our time frame. Sure. If it does not show any ash borers, say, closer than Franklin County, um, that would give us more time to do this. It would. I'm just concerned of how it jumps some from around the Toledo Bowling Green area to Delaware and, and northern Franklin County because it skipped quite a few counties mm -hmm. in doing that. Unless this or this procedure finds it, it is prevalent also in those other areas. Because as I understand, if someone makes a mistake in firewood or anything else violates some of the yes. rules that are set up, it can jump. And if someone has brought some infested firewood out to Stratron, sure. that, that would be a definite possibility. Right. I'd like some clarification on how, how it progresses. Is it, uh, you know, once it arrives in an area in Emily, does it, uh, is the infestation pretty rapid fire in a wide area or is it progressive, you know, year by year? Um, the original thought was that it would be progressing more slowly because the the borers cannot fly very far of course if they are taken that would make another hot spot but uh, once it is in the area um, there's not much that can be done to stop it no but the, I think the question is how quickly do the trees die and become a problem what, three um, years yeah, about three years. And would all the trees be infested in an area like Athens in one year, or would it take, no, it take no. several years for them to be infested? But um, it would, if there was a serious infestation, it would move pretty quickly through the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think what they're fighting for is just like they're trying to fight for forest fires, you do a fire break. So that's where they're trying to no, do the No, they've given up on that. they've given up on it. Right. Except it's for, the, for what is called hotspot areas. In, in terms of GIS, at this present time, um, does GIS also have electric lines mapped out in the present GIS for the city? No. Okay. So we, have, we do have poles, I think, in one of the layers that okay. we have. But we don't have electric from... We could probably get just about where the electric lines are, but we don't have capacity or those kinds of things. So that's why I say no. But I mean, I think Ron has like all the street lights and that type of stuff on one of them. Okay. I guess the reason why I'm asking is because if we're starting to look at you know a total picture of trees um, and a total uh, replacement of some species of trees along the way as blights come through or, or infestations come through, the next thing we do is say, okay, we're going to replace tree A or B. It'd be nice to have that information of it's are we going to replace it or a power line at any given time or place mm -hmm. in terms of again the pruning aspect of it down the line 20 years down the line. I doubt if many of these ash trees are underneath power lines. Yes, for okay. big trees. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wouldn't survive AEP pruning, I don't oh, think. Okay. That's true. Uh, but think actually that. getting AEP to provide a grid of, uh, for, for, for GIS purposes of where all their high voltage cables are would be very useful to us. Mm -hmm. and because there, are, there, aren't, there aren't that many of them in Athens. No. If we do have any that need to be pruned, we might ask the power company to just take them down. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That would be a nice coordination of yeah. resources. Yeah. So you're looking for the Tree Commission to either use expectation or create methods? Um, well, I think it has to be, you know, I can't, administratively, I can't just go out and do a plan and not use the pre -S. I foolishness <laughs> you know I mean you have to use resources mm -hmm. and the tree commission is a resource so that's why I wanted to personally come and say I'm concerned about this I'd like us to get a direction going I'm not saying do it next month or three months or four months from now or something mm -hmm. uh, but if we could start as one of the subtasks and maybe you spend 
15 or 20 minutes per meeting on it. The, as a defined thing, we try to get Ron in here. So mm -hmm. We try to get Ilgard, who we contract with for GIS now, uh, and see what their resources are. And then we contact some folks at the university for their resources and student help uh, or projects of the class, mm -hmm. you know, or different things like that, because this is practical, real life stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we start exploring that and start putting together our plan to approach it and if we start out in three months or six months I don't care as long as we're building toward that plan so that hopefully a year from now we would have a, a good tree inventory mm -hmm. and then based upon that we could do further planning mm -hmm. and on what develops in the meantime well that's what we, situation. we may have to react to a situation yeah. in terms of the 91 survey. Um, that's just for city right of ways and nothing more. Right. Okay. There were 3,000 some trees at that time. Was that also parks? No. I don't think the parks are in, in that survey. Okay. Um, is that electronic? Is that something that was put Second. on the web easily or no? Yeah. Okay. It's all. Oh, I see. Okay. That would be the, the other thing we want to try and do. Well, <laughs> fine. I, I mean, if it was electronic and somebody could just, you know, go to the page and say, that, I, I, that tree's been gone for years, you know, that would be okay. one step right there. I, I have a question about the trees that we, that we as a tree commission have planted uh, since 91. Has there been any kind of ongoing list of trees planted? It's, uh, strictly speaking, it's just an accumulation of lists. You know, well, well, but but that's better. Yeah. We have a list to start with because uh, the, the list, go through the list and see how many ash trees have been planted because I can remember not too long ago um, there was a plan to plant um, a bunch of ash trees and uh, that was before Emily joined it, but I knew about the animal ash borer, so I said, wait a minute, and it took a while, but we did convince not to plant any ash trees, and since then, we haven't been planting, but I don't know how many were planted between 91 and the time I came on yeah. and was aware of the problem. There may not be um, complete lists from 91 forward, but there are pretty good lists, uh, accumulations of them since uh, 2002. Uh, 2001 yeah. and the city did indeed plant uh, and I was on the commission that did it uh, two ash trees at 139 North Lancaster <laughs> in 2002 and in 2003 uh, the um, we no longer even had this at the ash tree on the recommended street tree list thanks to Emily um, but the uh, there are ash trees out there that have been planted and in fact uh, the the accumulation of lists of things that were to be planted is not necessarily an accurate indication of what was planted because, as you know, nurserymen uh, often show up uh, at the planting moment and say, oh, well, that wasn't available and so I substituted this. <laughs> Generally speaking, probably it wasn't ash because they tended to be more expensive things and so we're um, saved by a certain cheapness all around. <laughs> but there, uh, there isn't. Uh, we really do need inventory uh, because of this kind of patchwork of information. We don't know what's out there. In that 1991 census, which is uh, shown here, there were 3,000 trees. There were only something like 5.8 percent of them. This 176 right. trees were um, the uh, ash trees in the street tree population. Um, if, however, something came along that ate maples, we would really be in trouble because we have something like 20 to uh, at least 20 percent, maybe more like 28 percent maples. Many of those things are gone <coughs> that were inventory. Uh, I think after the 1991 inventory, inventory, pardon me, there was um, a removal um, of some 200 trees that were found to be uh, hazard trees or were blocking signs, uh, okay. causing problems. Yeah, I see that appendices for something. Yeah, so there are um, fewer of those trees are present than, uh, than you might expect. We have not, uh, the city's probably removed more trees than it has planted in that period um, because of the big uh, removal at that time and then continued removals ever after. And we plant, um, uh, I think one year we planted 40 trees, but mostly it's 30 trees or 28 trees a year. So getting up to just the initial removal um, is... Uh, uh, something haven't uh, that hasn't happened. 
Oh. The tree centers is not necessarily healthy for the trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't well in that case it was healthy for uh, for everyone because there were trees that had yes. to come down and they in some cases were you know, blocking stop signs or stop lights or um, visibility was blocked. So there were other reasons to know uh, what trees were up yeah. to. And this included uh, an assessment of uh, whether the tree was in um, excellent condition, good condition, poor condition, or dead. Uh, and it also did a survey of stumps. We have uh, stumps yeah, and stumps there are audit. <laughs> uh, we have stump many accumulating stumps. Very impressive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, our stump inventory is probably gone. <laughs> yeah. So I, in fact, we really ought to remove stumps. And that ought to be a, a removal uh, mm. program in places where uh, stumps um, pr provide a, a potential planting place. Some, in many cases, they don't. But, well, in view of all the maples we have, what we another thing we might do in public education is promote the planting of other tree species. Yeah. Because um, we do have such a high percentage and it's and it's not just like in these developments, it's not just that, oh well we've got ten maples, ten maples isn't that many, but the tendency is to get ten maples of exactly the same variety. Mm -hmm. Which on the face of it doesn't seem that bad. However, these are often clones of each other. They are genetically identical, so even if there is a threat, they're all genetically susceptible. Whereas if you have at least a variety of varieties, they will have individual differences genetically, and that it comes into play in terms of their resistance to um, weather conditions, insects, and a lot of this has to do with the condition of the tree because there are a lot of things that can damage trees, but um, but if the tree is healthy and is in the right place, then that tree can can survive or can resist even the, uh, the initial um, uh, infestation or um, attack, whether it's a virus or a bacterium or an insect or a fungus or whatever. So, um, once again, I call for diversity. <laughs> diversity of our um, uh, species, certainly, but the varieties also is important. So, yeah. The hard part is finding, finding what? That the hard part is finding the, the choices. Right. And, yeah. and not just actually identifying them, but actually getting the landscapers to discover them. Right, just, right. And getting the, the people who are involved in doing the work to do the work necessary to get them because they're often available but they may not be at the most convenient location. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Abel, for uh, moving us in the right... Yeah. Yeah. Right. You give us a year to do it, you know, Right, so. and, and getting us to do the right thing. Uh, yeah. This is something we should have done before. And, uh, it was something we've been wanting to do. Well, I think it's been talked about. Yeah. 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 Uh, a couple of years ago, we, we didn't get trying to get them to. Well, I was trying to hone in on was what's the magnitude of it because when I started on this, <coughs> Candy and I first talked, I didn't know if there were 200 or 600. Mm -hmm. yeah. 600 would have been a lot more problematic. Yes. So we least. have many fewer than some places like Upper Arlington, right? And certainly than some of the places in southern Michigan where they had just huge numbers of ash trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, replaced uh, elm trees that have been killed off by Dutch elm disease with massive plantings of um, ash. And that's an illustration of what uh, we was talking about with the right. culture problem. Yeah. So, well, that's, the, that's, that's, that's part of what, what my thought is, is, I don't want to just take out ash, I want to replant. Mm -hmm. I mean, we want to replant and get our mix and everything yeah. else in better shape by, by doing it through right way and I guess I'll be sure we gotta get rid of stumps too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. Well okay well I thank you, well, all I, thank you thank you. Very much. We will put this um, I think we can start um, <coughs> in September by having an agenda slot mm -hmm. uh, for the Emerald Ash Borer question and uh, getting um, uh, perhaps some information out there on methodology to start with. Uh, Marietta has a current in, uh, inventory and they use much of what is in that census that you see there yeah. in the way of methodology. We need to have a meeting with uh, Ron Lucas uh, to discuss an action plan for doing, doing the census. Yes. Because we, somebody came and talked to us about um, how it's done some other places and there, 
they go you can go around with a handheld yeah. device and key it in and then it can be all the information can mm -hmm. be electronically transferred which all doesn't it's all fine and good but the original information of course you has still to need be right yes. you need people yes. and, and yes. the, the who are not is. just saying uh like there was one census that I heard it was done on our, an army base. They were identifying all the trees, but everything that was in the tree came under one category, which was, you know, not uh, not the way. That. Well, in, in the list of ash trees that I have, there's also a mountain ash listed, which <laughs> is a different species. and. Not susceptible to the ice. Uh, that's, that's an unfortunate uh, indication that somebody didn't know what they were doing on that list. Yes. Well, common names. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we will, um, I think, go. Uh, probably we should try for Ron when it's not strict to uh, uh, repair time. Um, so sometime uh, once the uh, uh, early, early fall, yeah, and we'll get the alert him well in advance. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, well, we're going to meet as a group. You're going to give us a presentation. Yes, um, present some of the materials I have yeah. on the Emerald Ice Borer. Yeah. And from that we can probably then, and by September, come up with some sort of plan that yes. the mayor can deal with in I, terms of uh, what I th might happen. I think, it, I think it would be good to wait until after this tree conference mm -hmm. in yeah. early August yeah. because we may get some I know you are going there, and I will be there, and we may get some more of the latest information. The last time that I had a real update was in February. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, we will uh, wait until mid-August then. Uh, Just one, one comment. Why not do it on government <coughs> channel so that other folks could hear this information? Well, this, this is a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that um, it would be good for us to do it by ourselves and have a chance yeah. for right. uh, we, questions. Maybe some time. And, we, we might be able to make a PowerPoint presentation that could just be put on the web. Yes. Yes. But Emily has given this talk before publicly. People have had an opportunity to. <laughs> Without see much response. There have been many, there have been a number of different venues where the talk yeah. has been given. Not to say that it shouldn't be you know, on there, but. Yeah, well, um, I suspect you're not going to escape and that you will have this happen to you. <laughs> there is um, a DVD uh, program that is presently um, being shown on our government channel. It's called Emerald Ash Borer, The Green Menace. And it was a DVD given to us by uh, at, at the Arbor Day, or pardon me, uh, the that's, Tree City celebration. Yeah, right. that's out of date though. That that was uh, prepared for a Detroit radio station, I think, two years ago. Ah, well, so this, lots of things have happened since right, then. But there's some basic information. Yes, yes, yeah. this, and it's presented more interestingly than some of the other materials. <laughs> yes. And this, uh, the same DVD is available at the library. Uh, okay, we've got okay. two copies. Ann Bonner gave us a second copy so that people can check it out at the library. So one, if one is interested in the problem with the Emerald Ash Borer, you can go get the DVD at the Home Street Library, uh, Athens County Library, and it is the Emerald Ash Borer, The Green Menace is the title of the uh, DVD. Tree permits. And I have one of those, but mine no longer works. Oh, I think we're uh, hopeless technologically. <laughs> okay. That DVD. Uh, DVD. Oh, oh, DVD. Ice Board, the oh, the Emerald Ice Borer, the DVD. We have uh, several tree permits, um, and they're not uh, actually. Um, would people mind if I pulled up the Landscape Award uh, item up yeah. first, because I think Larry and uh, might be interested in that, and they may or may not be uh, all that excited about the tree permits. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have coming up um, the third annual award uh, for uh, landscapes uh, at businesses, basically. We have uh, done this uh, in, let's see, in 2004, the first award winners for the best new landscaping was Ruby Tuesdays, and the best established landscaping was Ohio University Inn. Uh, those are the two categories. And then last year, the, um, the best new landscaping was uh, 
Lowe's and the best established uh, landscaping was Hocking Valley Bank. Um, and uh, you can see that um, the qualifications, or, uh, if you think about this, uh, those two uh, categories, is that there have to be uh, shade trees in the parking lot. That's one of the uh, qualifications for uh, being nominated for this award. So we are now calling for nominations for uh, businesses that have done landscaping, that have new landscaping or that have established landscaping, and uh, that landscaping has trees, shade trees in the parking lot. Uh, we are going to um, uh, review them. We have members of the Tree Commission who uh, have perhaps uh, served in this capacity of review too, too many times, but I bet you are <laughs> willing to do it again, perhaps. Uh, so if you have a nomination uh, of a business that you would like to make, please send the name of the business and its address to the mayor's office. Uh, Candy Brad Bradley uh, will uh, keep the list for us and uh, the Tree Commission will look at the, um, the sites and then an award will be made sometime in October probably uh, for um, the uh, the winners, the deadline for submitting nominations is the end of September, September 30th. So, are there any questions? I have a request. Yes. Not that I've consulted with Emily. But my request is that the other members of the Tree Commission be looking around so that there will be a greater pool because in the past our nominations have not been plentiful. Um, so if you can kind of look at businesses or institutions, it doesn't have to be a business, right? Mm -hmm. It could be That's true. a non-profit. A non-profit or an apartment building. Um, I think uh, there's been a nomination already of um, a new, uh, a transformed Basically anything building. that's not a private res residence, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in the past, we have, we have not done it when they were all just immediately planted. We've kind of weighed, we've kind of looked at ones that were recently done, but we're given a little bit of time to yeah, mature. Recent doesn't necessarily mean this year, it could mean yes. planted in the previous year or so. Right, mm -hmm. right. Whereas a well-established one has been there for probably five or ten years. Right. Because I think we, what we want to encourage is not only nice landscaping using shade trees, but maintenance at least so that if they've survived for a year or two. Yeah, yeah the landscape ordinance calls for these landscapes being maintained and so the prize to the established person is that they've got a good maintenance program or ATI on and that's certainly what the win is in the last two years. Of year. And the other point is that last year we thought we might not be giving an award on a regular basis for the uh, long established um, landscape because um, we're running out of choices so um, that's that true. just another point I wanted to bring up now. maybe you can stir the pot for us and see, see if some of the long established <laughs> owners of landscapes can get themselves nominated <laughs> oh, are there any other questions okay um, let's see we have um, Several tree permits and a new permit. Um, we have not yet had a uh, chance to uh, get information from Ann Bonner. Uh, she was away for a while, and um, I saw her desk yesterday, and she's not getting to this really fast. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't even sit in her chair. She had that much uh, stuff to tend to. There were, uh, so um, none of these are um, truly hazard things. Um, there is a Let's see, 69 Morris, and in fact, there are other trees on Morris that might be candidates for possible pruning. Uh, it's um, if people want to go look at 69 Morris Avenue, that's um, I've uh, looked at that. It looks like it might be a, a deadwood pruning of an old silver maple. I think if Ann sees it, that might very well be her assessment. And the um, owners at that, uh, it's a tree in the tree lawn. Um, the owners of the house at 69 Morris. Uh, very much want to keep the tree as long as possible and if and when it comes down would love to have a replacement but it would uh, definitely be one of those grind out the stump in order to mm -hmm. replant there isn't any space and uh, David found uh, a tree at 150 Morris that might need possible pruning um, we might group these things for the contractor if, uh, but we'll get a final word from Ann on that there is uh, 
the most difficult one was 15 Ring Street. Uh, it's hard to find, and Brian Zulik uh, did a really good job of putting together a map. I would never have figured this out. Uh, so if people want to look at this map and go take a look at this tree, the uh, 15 Ring, it is an old walnut that is uh, up the dead end alley beside a house off Ring, and then um, there's a slope and there's a walnut uh, that has a rakish angle um, leaning over 15 Ring Street. And that is an area that has had uh, two wind events that have been really dramatic. It's worth keeping that in mind. And I think so. I uh, didn't get really close. There's a very healthy uh, growth of uh, poison ivy all in front of it. <laughs> you don't want to be warned. Yes, yes. Don't wade right in. Uh, the, the question is the, the site, perhaps, the angle of the tree, the, uh, and the fact that um, there have been some really dramatic events with trees in that neighborhood due to windstorms twice. Um, I mean, um, the third one that we had before the meeting was um, 85 Elmwood. I've ants looked at this before. Uh, it's, uh, I do believe, and it's an oak tree that is right uh, at the sidewalk on the Elmwoods. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen that. That's a shape. Yes, yeah, it's um, it's a pathetic looking thing, yeah. uh, and it um, doesn't pose a hazard, uh, and said given its size and its punkiness, but um, it is uh, probably something that should be perhaps removed, but um, not on a you know, on an emergency basis. Yeah. And, and well, I mean, it could be that all of these that we looked at earlier are not in an emergency. We can combine these things with one contract. Like yes, we get a, a better deal. Um, in the case of 85 Elmwood, uh, if people would go and look at that one and email uh, me back about that, we can tell the owner of the property that uh, if you all agree to uh, uh, removal, then um, we could put that on that list. And if they want to remove it before that time, uh, they could do so. Uh, that would give you permission to get something that's yep. quite ugly out of there. And uh, it's a very handsome house. So basically, are we giving permission to all of the at all of these sites for if the individual there or if some individual there wants to remove it to go ahead and remove, no. or do we have to examine? Okay, uh, we're waiting. I, I mean, the, the, the pruning, the pruning, pruning, or we're going to wait for Ann. Um, hmm. Well, it's only six sixty nine where yeah. they've asked for pruning. These yeah. other sites are okay. ones that I haven't spotted recently where there are loose branches. Up in the trees that need, yeah. that need to be removed, but okay. they're not. I don't, I don't know their immediate hazard. But okay, they're, yeah, but they're their potential yeah. hazards. Yes, right. Yeah. It's 15 ring where we really need in yeah. uh, to tell us what's going on there. Yeah. But people uh, yeah. ought to. Yeah. Um, so um, go look at those other sites and uh, email your uh, impression 69 Morris, 150 Morris, so that we at least are all on the same page about. What's going on here? Yeah, the, the Elliot Stimson corner, that's uh, where there's a big, big gas station on one side of Elliot, and there's a rental on the other side. There's a tree on, on the Elliot side of that rental on the corner there that's got a branch high up and it's loose. Uh, yeah, I think it's in the right of way. We need to get to uh, Steve's. Okay. Have a look at that one. What's, is that 17 East Stimson? Is that <laughs> I'm the... not sure what it is. You, you, you have to remember what uh, the, the number of the houses on the corner of. Uh, Elliot and, uh, and Stimson. Is it Guilty Rental? Guilty? Yeah. Junkies? Yeah. It's opposite the bank, so it's going to be a low, a low team, so, you know, 18, 19. Yeah, corner from the bank. Yeah. And across Campbell from Hockey Bell mm. yeah. yeah. It's something like 19 Stimson or 17 mm -hmm. Stimson. Uh, okay. It's actually on the, on the Elliot Street side of it. Okay, so that is 17 East Stimson. Ah, okay. okay. That's Oh, I, I told you about that. I okay, had a number on there. Right. <laughs> the memory is going big. Yeah, I don't remember that. It's amazing. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so 17 East Stimson. Yeah. Um, and what kind of tree? Silver maple. Silver maple. <laughs> See you. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a branch. It's, just, it's a branch that's broken off and and, 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 and it's caught up in the uh, in the branches, so it isn't going to fall. It needs to. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see, um, Highland Park trees, uh, Paul, you uh, brought those to our attention. I gather those were on private property. 
Oh, they are? Okay, I wasn't sure. I, they look like they're on the other side of the fence, yeah. They're to the, yeah. I guess, the south side of uh, Highland Park. Or right. Or maybe the east side. I, I'm not sure which town this point is. Yeah, the meandering hills, it's hard to know where's he. I was up there basically uh, last month, um, and there's two trees that uh, just pass the fence if you're going towards uh, town, if you're going down Highland, and this one's totally dead, the other one doesn't look happy. I don't know what kind of trees are. Well, they're now down on the ground. Oh, they are? Sawed, oh, uh, in they did it already. Yes, um, okay. so, uh, but that is indeed uh, private property. Okay. Uh, one time we know from having accidentally planted on the wrong side of that line. <laughs> <laughs> it's daffodils at the time, though. Okay, I, I just brought it up because I saw it when I was there, and I didn't know whose who it was, except it, I was standing in a park. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think they were concerned about that, too, okay. and so they're down. Um, we have um, one, um, let's see, 15 Granville is a late late addition to the tree permit uh, requests, and Steve brought this in a yellow pine uh, request to remove, and this is, oh wow, we've got an overhead view. Well documented, looks like. Yes, indeed. Um, a with red gum, no less. <laughs> oh, so this was uh, something that should have been removed, but now that we're, uh, maybe we should ask AEP well, if, if AEP it's in really bad shape. Then, then we get them to do it, yes. Yeah, so it has yeah. a red dot on it, huh? Snows when we went by. Uh, oh. We don't put it on there. No, we don't put red dots on there. The homeowner was trying to trick us. Yeah, it's so wrong. rubbing up against his house. I mean, it's real close to the house. The house yeah. Would you pass down that map for me? Okay. So it's it's uh, a purpose to contact AP on this, or just? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I'm going to go out and look at it okay. uh, just to inform yeah. myself and anybody um, else on the tree commission. These are good opportunities to learn. Work? Uh, yeah. Many issues at the, all at the same time, but yes, in, indeed, if this is a red dot, don't you think we ought to approach uh, AEP about uh, speeding up the removal of uh, this and, and then uh, yeah. see what happens? Uh, but so, to try to get the tree out of there if indeed this is a problem. We have uh, the last item on the agenda is Tree Commission term appointments. Um, Lee, Greg, and I have both both expired. Uh, terms um, and uh, the mayor is. Uh, he recommended you for reappointment, and we did it last night. You were to do. So it's too late now, Lee. Thank you. <laughs> so that was last night. So you're, you're back on. <laughs> okay. Is um, yeah, and we're on for two years, uh, two year terms, which mm -hmm. means uh, we will have. Uh, sequential terms and we won't all uh, disappear at once. So, wait a minute, the reason for removing this yellow pine, according to this, the person who made the application, is that the needles are clogging the new cutters. Well, let's see if it's truly, truly dead, but if it is a red dot remove, uh, AEP must have had an opinion about it, perhaps. Okay. All right. Um, Does it say that it's dead? That's why we go look. Okay, okay. <laughs> because I don't see anything on here that it's... That it well, yeah, then we're not going to remove it. Right. Unless... Right. Okay. First we find out then, uh, that if indeed it is, uh, and it has the red dot truly bestowed by uh, AEP, okay. then we will uh, the try to you know, talk to AEP first. Now for... Uh, I think that that is it for the agenda. Right? Unless, yes, may I have, is there anybody with more uh, business? Larry, would you like? Um, okay, Steve. Steve, Steve you. Um, I just wanted to give you a report on a reaction to a letter that I copied the tree commission on regarding landscaping around the Altel uh, cell phone oh, tower. Yes. Out on East State Street. and. Mike Pitcher, um, who's an engineer with SiteQuest, who did the uh, site location for Altel, 
Um, I spoke with him. He received the letter. He still said he had to get me something back in writing. There were two issues involved. Um, one was the size of the flag that they were putting on the tower. Um, and he promised me that before the 4th of July, he would have Beltel put a larger flag on, which he did. So I don't know if you've noticed that. Oh, yeah. Yes. It looks much more in perspective now. Yeah. Actually, it looks like a flagpole. Yeah, but the, the scale is perfect. Yeah. And the second issue was, I believe there were 14 um, blue spruce required to be planted um, with, with a planting height um, of six feet. And I asked him why only 11 two-foot had been planted. He said he talked with the contractor who said six-footers weren't available, um, only only ones that were two feet high, and he couldn't explain why he planted fewer than the number <laughs> required. So he was going to remind the uh, contractor of his obligation, his contract, and what he was paid to do. So those trees should be the right number and the right height yeah. of trees should be. We shouldn't get him to plant them before the fall. Though. It's it'd be really bad doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not the stuff. Right. Mr. Pitcher was very sensitive, to be honest with you, to the whole thing. He, you know, he feels like he's the one that came to town, did the presentation, um, went to the meetings, made the agreements, and he feels obligated to get with Altel, you know, to say, this is what I negotiated on your behalf, you need to follow through with it. So he was very, very cooperative. Very good. Yeah, they're, um, it's healthy uh, stock that the man planted, but it's, uh, they're, they're toy trees, really. Mm -hmm. so, so. Many years before they'll be six feet high. Yeah. Well, I wish they were all this easy to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Mr. Just let you know. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Very good. Well, it's, uh, if there is no other business, I think we can uh, declare ourselves adjourned. Yes, great. Okay. Thank you. Now we have to just set up a, a time for Emily right. to uh, right. Emily do the presentation. presentation. You want to do it after the 4th of August? I think it would be better to do it then. Yeah. Because yeah. after the 4th of August, yeah. are you going to attend the the tree conference then, uh, we may get...